Hi, I'm Johnson Haygood. I'm in Vero Beach, Florida, and you are watching The Best Practices Show. Hey guys, thanks for watching the best practice show. We take a look at the best business practices from the best dental practices all over the world. I'm so grateful you're watching today. I got one of my good friends on who's had an incredible career in dentistry, and he's going to share with us some of the most rewarding things to think about if you're going to have a, a fulfilling career in dentistry. So you do not want to miss this with Dr. Johnson Haygood. So do me a favor, just grab a pen and hit the share button before we get started. Now, a couple show notes. We are shooting this live on Facebook. So as you're watching it, if you have questions that come up, add them to the feed and I'll give them right to Johnson. We'll just ask him while we got them on. And if you have questions later on, continue to add them to the feed because we want you to get the most out of this while you're watching this. And again, even today, a couple suggestions on shows, uh, keep sending them us to those. Keep, uh, all I can say is thank you again for all the shares. We're up over 39,000 followers on Facebook and 150,000 of you on iTunes and uh, just, again, just crazy grateful and having a lot of fun. Now, my guest today, Dr. Johnson Haygood. Now, Johnson, you and I have known each other for, um, it's been a decade or so. We had a chance to meet at the Panky Alumni Meeting, and I think um, that was in Miami probably 10 years ago, somewhere in there. Uh, yeah, and you're involved in a lot of incredible education. The Panky Institute, you've been involved with the uh, AACD. Uh, I had a chance to come out and be with you guys at the Florida Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry, which is an unbelievable meeting that you guys put together. But if somebody's watching this and they don't know who Johnson Haygood is, tell us who you are, and we would love to know your story. Okay. Well, I graduated from uh, dental school in 1991 from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And... Um, I ended up in Virginia Beach. That's a long story. I went to Virginia Beach, Virginia. Long story of how, how I got started there because now I'm in Florida, mm -hmm. but I did practice for 10 years in Virginia Beach, Virginia. I actually did five associateships, one 50-50 partnership that lasted 13 months, and then I opened my own one-chair practice that was in independent of insurance um, and then I ran that for about four years before I sold that to a maxillofacial prosthodontist and moved to Florida. All right. Um, where then I started over buying a practice, which I had not done before. So just about every way you can do it, I did it and failed. Um, almost anything you can do wrong business-wise in dentistry, I've done it. Mm. Uh, embezzlement been there. Um, bankruptcy, been there early on. Um, lots of lots of uh, little trips, but um, one thing that happened, I stayed very, very true to my vi original vision, which had a lot to do with staying out of insurance. Yeah. And the payoff came later in life. It took me 25 years to become an overnight success. But, <laughs> but, um, but I got a really great practice and I'm, I, today, I want to really talk about having a rewarding career in dentistry, financially and for your soul. Yeah, that's awesome. And I think it's important, as you and I were talking about, you know, um, I, I always don't get a lot of when people go, oh, yeah, I've been successful since the day I started. Your path was not a traditional path. Like, it was not easy. I mean, first of all, getting out of, I mean, you went to a fabulous dental school. Getting out of dental school is a, is a challenge in itself. Then trying to find out where you want to be. Then trying to find the right model for you. Tell us a little bit about that journey. It was not an easy path for you at all. Right. You know, in some ways, I was really fortunate because I was really fortunate to come across some great mentors early on. Mm -hmm. The unfortunate parts were just life. You know, life hit me. You know, as soon as I got to Florida, we had a double hurricane. Category three, category fours hit us back to back two weeks apart, really set us back. Um, and like I say, embezzlement, all kinds of other little bad trips. But from the very beginning, 
I started with good mentors. I was fortunate enough to actually work in one of the best restorative dental practices in the country before I even went to dental school, and that was uh, Dr. Steve Hartz in Chapel Hill. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I met him while I was waiting tables, and he asked me what I was doing. He ended up inviting me in. Uh, he, Wait, he, that's he, how you guys met? That's how we met. Because he's a Chapel Hill grad also, is he not? No, he's Tufts. No. Oh, he's, he's a Tufts guy. Okay. Yeah, he's a Tufts graduate, but right. he's uh, he's in Chapel Hill. I think one of the best restorative dentists in the country. You know him well. Also, one of the funniest dentists. Yeah, he is. He's, he could, hey, you and he could do a good show together. Oh, we'd have to censor a lot of it, but if he. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to do it. It's going to be awesome. So, yeah, and you guys have been friends. So, he, he talked to you when you were waiting tables, huh? Yeah, so he invited me in and, and I came in and he said, hey, I'll hire you to be a dental assistant. Great. That lasted about an hour. Mm -hmm. And after an hour of me dental assisting, he said, we're going to find another spot for you in, in our office. And so the dental assisting didn't, didn't go too well. Uh -huh. But he put me back in the lab and I, I got to do a lot of lab work and, uh, and learn a lot of stuff that they're teaching at the Panky Institute before I even went to dental school. So when I went to dental school, I knew that I was going to be a restorative dentist and that I was going to study at the Panky Institute after I graduated. And I felt like that was very, very, just a, a huge blessing to start that way. And then, of course, I met Paul Henney and Charlie, Charlie Verapapa shortly after getting out of dental school. We co-founded the study club, Bob Barkley Study Club of D.C., and that's still going today. And that's been a huge influence, too. So I've, I've been fortunate to have mentors like Paul, Charlie, Steve Hart, and then also one that I would put in that category is uh, Susan Holler in Arlington, Texas. Yeah, all amazing people, you know, and I got a chance, like I said, you and I met 10 years ago, but Charlie, I met probably 20 years ago, and all those guys, even Paul, they've just been incredible at bringing people into the fold and taking good care of them. I mean, I met Charlie when I had no money, and he just, he would bring me to courses, and it was awesome, just, and what you learned from that is just unbelievable and i had no idea that steve got you involved in dentistry so yeah. i'm i'm learning a little bit more context about your story now i do want you to talk about the why before we get in the how because you guys get a chance to mentor a lot of dentists you've been down at the institute you've been you get dentists to come also in at at all i spent five years out uh, helping at spear as well that's awesome that is yeah. awesome and you get to see dentists at all different phases of their career how important is the fulfillment or the rewarding piece of dentistry because we joke about this dentistry can be the greatest job or the worst job right exactly and you know i can't say that i have all good days i still have tough days mm -hmm. but if you look at my schedule and what i'm doing um i'm independent of insurance so we we uh, will assist our patients in getting their insurance filed for them to be reimbursed Mm -hmm. uh, but we are a true fee-for-service practice, which, by the way, is is just takes a long time and hard work, and but it's worth it. Um, mm. You know, I want to be able to spend. It, it's a relationship-based practice. Mm -hmm. In other words, every patient, we're more interested in the relationship than anything else. I don't have daily production goals in my practice. I do have financial goals for months and years, but, you know, we just want to do what's right for each person. Uh, we're in it for the long haul with our patients. Um, it, it's really all about the relationship because that's what makes your days go better. Mm -hmm. um, and, and not just the relationship with the patients, but also your, your team, your extended team being your specialists, and then uh, the other professionals that I work with. Um, all of those people are so important and it's all about every day being able to find reward and being energized by being in your practice as compared to finish, you know, if you finish a bad day, you're, you're, you're just zapped, you know, you've lost all your energy and you're going home to your family, uh, with no energy, which means you're, you're probably going to have to either take somebody else's energy or, you know, you know, all about the energy thing. Uh, trying to eliminate energy suckers out of your mm -hmm. life. And those come in multiple forms, not just patients. Um, what I want to do is leave my practice energized. And most days I would say I leave, I work out after. 
And then I feel even better after that. So you're the triathlete. I work out six days a week. Um, my, my hours are eight to three 30 every day. We skip lunch. So everybody's out by three 30 and I'm finished with the gym by five. So you do eight to three 30, uh, and you work how many days a week? Four days work? a week. Yeah. Which, roughly. which days? Uh, Monday through Thursday. So Monday we work Thursday. 192 days a year. Okay. And then do you take a lunch at all? I'm always curious how that works. No lunch. Yeah. I mean, unless I need through. to set up a, a lunch meeting, then we'll do it every now and then. Wait, and patients still every, come come to yeah. your office without evening hours or Saturdays and Sundays and type things like yeah, that? Yeah, they still come. You know, part of this is realizing that you can't be everything to everybody. You got to decide what you want, and then you can be better for, for your people. You have to decide what you want to do. Don't let the tail wag the dog. If you just stay in it, uh, you know, tough with this uh, fee-for-service idea. Now, with that being said, I don't think anybody can do it anywhere. Mm-hmm. And I even moved once in my career. You know, right. I, I was in Virginia Beach for the first 10 years. And at the time, I didn't feel like I could have a conversation with a patient without talking about insurance. Mm-hmm. And Paul Henney says, geez, I just got back from Florida. And this guy was telling me his patients didn't have insurance. And I, I, I literally the next day I signed up to take the board. And after being a dentist for 10 years, I just I sold my practice and moved to Florida. Now. I've also watched insurance and corporate dentistry move in down here and take over. Mm-hmm. Actually, that is benefiting me right now. So the the l- many practices are getting sold to corporate right now. Uh, insurance is involved more than ever. Even my patients, we, we have more conversations about insurance than I used to. Mm-hmm. So it's even pervaded in, into the, the I, I tried to run away from it and I couldn't escape it. I've had to deal with it too. But, um, you know, what I've found now with this, these changes that are happening are actually helping me differentiate my practice so much more. It's actually making it better for me. Yeah. You know, uh, people are looking for this. Now, yeah. when they come in here and they get to sit down and have somebody listen to them for a little while and not be running around to two or three patients at a time, uh, you know, the right, the, the people that want that will find you. Yeah. So fee for service, high quality dentistry is not dead. It's a lot. It's, it's a lot. not dead. They used to tell <laughs> us, you know, back in the day, I remember Liberty Dental was one of them. Uh-huh. They said, you guys are the last cottage industry. They were telling us then this in the 90s. You're going to be like pharmacists. You're going to be working for Walmart. It's all going to be over in a decade. You may as well sell your practice now. And we were also told by our financial planners and even some of the best teaching institutes that our practices were going to be worth nothing. So don't even put that in your net worth. Right. Well, guess what? Right now, I'm actually getting ready to, I I don't mind sharing numbers and stuff. Um, I'm so excited because I'm going to, I'm going to have my first million dollar year. Mm -hmm. Well, a a lot of people are like, so what? That's nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I got three chairs and 900 square feet of space and a thousand dollar mortgage that I'm almost done with. Yeah. And I'm going to do a million dollars. Yeah. So I don't need to do more. I don't want to do more than that. Yeah. Um, And, you know, these guys, I could sell, well, my practice is worth at least 70% of that. And some corporations are paying 100%. Yeah. Um, But sorry, they can't have it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and I love what you said before we went, you know, you're one of those great teachers who's not like saying this is the way it's a way to explain that. Like it's a way to do it. You know, there's a lot of ways you can do this in dentistry. You know, you can go for the $10 million practice if you want. I love simplicity. So when you keep things simple and you're, you know, your net uh, at the end of the year is it's not how much you produce, it's how much you keep and what you, you know, what your life looks like more than anything and how well you take care of your patients. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a pretty good lifestyle. This is, you know, and I'm able to stay in shape. I could do this for a long time. I won't have to, but I can. Yeah. That's awesome. That is awesome. And, um, you know, when you talk about the path in dentistry, um, take us through this. So we're going to talk about your five tips and I'll go in any order you want. If you want to go in reverse, we can go Uh, But start where you want to start. If I'm a young dentist watching this, let's say, Jensen, I'm 32, and I'm like, man, I'm just not having that much fun. What would you tell me? What are the five tips? I I would say if you're not having much fun, it may be because you're trying to work. My guess is that in many cases, you're you're working too hard to make what you make. 
and you're you're moving too fast. You're not connecting with with people. Um, you're you're maybe doing commodity dentistry to some extent. You're doing crowns on people instead of for people. Um, and so I'm going to give, and, and I'm going to say, if that's your issue and you would like to see fewer patients and still make a very nice living and really enjoy your work better and really feel better about the quality of what you're doing, then the five, t- I'm going to give you five tips because I, I started off, I was going to write 10 and I told you earlier, I wrote down five and then I thought, you know what, the next five are not going to be anywhere near as important as these, so I'll focus on these. And uh, I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm going to move up to the top. Number one is the most important. That's coming last. First is um, internal marketing. Okay. Internal marketing versus external marketing. And guess who I learned more about that from than anybody else? I don't know who. Kirk Barrett. Oh, stop. Come on. Well, <laughs> I still, we still watch, I've got, I've saved some of the, the, the seminars. You could spend five full days a year in office meetings, just reviewing the tapes of Kirk talking about internal marketing. And, and if you haven't exhausted all of those before you ever start doing external marketing, we're basically doing no external marketing now. I have in the past. I think it's it's something that you need to do in the beginning. Um, I've found that the ROI on most of my external marketing is just doesn't it doesn't make sense. Um, I've got a really great website. I think um, I think uh, take a look at that Vero Beach Art of Dentistry. Uh, we have a lot of folks come to my practice who are retiring and they're dentists looks up for credentials in, in our area and they send them to me. That's my number one way besides uh, personal referrals uh, website, but it's really dentists going on the website and then sending their patients as they retire here. That's, That's so become my second best uh, new patient thing. So my website, but internal marketing, that is taking care of the folks that are right in front of you, right. answering the phone correctly and being having phone skills. Um, we are not trying to get every patient call in. That's not something we're trying to 100% of those calls. We need a good match. We, we will have some people say, hey, you know, it sounds like you might be better off giving such and such a call. You know, so we want to help every patient that's on the phone, even if it means not taking them into our practice. Um, but otherwise, and inter- just lots of little things like, um, and this was our idea that we came up with. This is a this is a tumbler, and it's got my logo on it, Vero Beach Art of Dentistry. I don't think you could read it. I but see. everybody loves these. I bought them in mass, got about uh-huh. that. And so they came out to about eight bucks a piece. Mm-hmm. And we give these to new patients, people who refer patients, people who we saw 10 minutes late. If we see anybody 10 minutes late in our office, they get either one of these or uh, Starbucks uh, or Panera's gift certificates. Everybody in the office has the power to do these things, to give these things away for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, again, just – and there's a million ways, uh, Kirk – watch his stuff and learn all the ways that you can do because if you do all this stuff you might not have time to do external marketing so that was yeah. my tip number one is internal marketing yeah and i would imagine you being fee for service when you're doing a lot of internal marketing you know you're getting patients that come in and go look i already know the rules i already know that you're expensive i already know that you're not going to take my insurance and so um it's a great way for you to build a practice yeah and it's amazing how many new patients who just finish our exam, their first visit will refer people mm-hmm. um, just because of the experience. Right. It really, really is. It's not just the quality dentistry. It's the whole experience. The facility's got to look right. The team, we're getting to that. I'm going to tell you some of the other things. So my mm-hmm. next one, uh, moving up from number five to number four, is insurance dependence, which independence, which I've talked about. I just don't believe that you can provide the best quality in the world off of PPO fees. Mm -hmm. Um, And many of my fees are based on time. And really, if you look at most of my production, it's, 
it's kind of split into two categories. It's big cases, which I'll put cosmetic into that, aesthetically driven and prosthetically driven cases. But then it's also single and double crowns. So I, um, I do, you know, for me, is it my bread and butter? One or two crowns a day is all I really need plus big cases mm -hmm. because the fees are there. Um, and I only have one administrative uh, I'm going to get to team. I only have one administrative person because we don't have one person on the phone with insurance companies all day. Right. Right. And I think, you know, the, one of the questions that comes up is, well, did you just get that way? I mean, being insurance independent, Jess, it takes require. I mean, it's really a behavioral thing. You got to learn how to communicate because you don't have, even though people are highly referred, you don't get a shortage of insurance questions. Like you mentioned, we are getting seen more than we ever have. Right. Actually, uh, the further I'm getting along, it's just the trend. We're having more, and it, it's still frustrating for me. You mm -hmm. know, I, you know, there's something in the back of your mind going, "Oh my God, do we really have to go there again?" I thought I got, I thought I was, you know, had escaped, but mm -hmm. I have not 100% escaped having to talk about it, insurance. One of my favorite sayings I got from Paul Henney, and that is, you know, in 1979 we had our first dental insurance. And they had a thousand dollar max per year benefit, and you know what? You could buy a Mustang for thirty two hundred dollars back then. Mm -hmm. What's a Mustang cost now? Thirty five thousand, right? Probably more. And the uh, maximum per year is the same. Mm -hmm. What's happened to the premiums? Yeah, you know. And so a lot of it is okay, a certain amount of people know what they're getting into coming here, but then they still, a lot of folks still come in and they go, but I got this insurance. And we still have to have those conversations. But how you have them is very important. You can't be a come across being angry at insurance. It is just something that exists. It's totally. what it is. Every profession has something that makes it hard. For us, it's that, you know, and it's just, mm -hmm. it's not, you know, I, I've tried to change my attitude about it. It's been difficult, but it's, let's just say that it is just, it is, it's there. Let's be positive about it with patients and just explain, help them understand what they have, that we're happy to do everything and anything we can do to get you your benefit that you deserve. Yeah. But Hey, let's just, let's be real here. Yeah. That's not going to get you healthy. Yeah. Now, what would you now You get these questions and I get them too. You run into a kid at a major state meeting who's in his 30s and they have 5,000 patients and they're all insurance. And what would you say to the young kid who's like, Johnson, I got little kids. I mean, it, it sounds like you have a great practice. What would you tell me? My, I got 5,000 patients, all PPO. Any, That's any, a great any advice? Question because, you know, if I was to sit here and tell you just stop taking insurance, uh, I would never do that because that could be very detrimental to right. is everybody has different, as we say at the Panky Institute, everyone has different circumstances, mm -hmm. different temperament. Um, you know, we all have your age matters. There's so many factors. And so what I would say is <laughs> There's so many things to work on. One of the things you can do is start watching the Bob Barkley Study Club on Facebook. You, you need to learn more about behavioral dentistry. Uh, L.D. Pankey said, you know, study like crazy. Do continuing education. But by the way, 50% behavioral, 50% clinical. Mm -hmm. Okay? Not 90% clinical, not 80% clinical. He said 50%. That's a lot. That's right. why Charlie and Paul and I started a study club where we said we're not allowed to talk about clinical. It's only going to be behavioral. Yeah. Delve into that. Get in with like-minded people. Find mentors who have done it. And then, you know, because for me to advise anybody, I have to know more about you. You know, yeah. how, you may you may have to do what I did. I moved. Mm-hmm. OK, that's how extreme, but that's how passionate I was about practicing this way. After 10 years, I sold my practice and I moved and I started again and it was still hard. Mm -hmm. OK, it's not easy, but it is, I think, the best way, in my opinion, it's the best for the patients and the best for the dentist and the team. Awesome. Awesome. What would be tip number three? 
Okay, next one is, actually, I just said it, 50-50 behavioral clinical CE. You got it. You can't just study how to do a better crown prep or an occlusion. Yeah, you now I totally learn. agree. I totally agree. But describe what behavioral is. So if I, if I don't really understand, what's behavioral? Okay, what is behavioral? Um, another panky quote. I never, I never had a, a set of teeth walk in my office. Mm-hmm. Something like that. In other words, it's a person. You, we really want to understand that person um, before we start making recommendations to them. Because given the same set of teeth, there's different treatment plans depending on the person. And what about the timing? Mm-hmm. You know, are they really ready? Um, you know, <laughs> who's it? Sandy Ross said, here's, here's the patient's world. Yeah. And this little dot is dentistry for them. Mm -hmm. And then we want to make it all about getting your teeth perfect. And they're like, no, 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 no. You're just this little dot. I've got all this other stuff going on. What is behavioral? Behavioral is, is, is there's just so much to it. But what it really is, is learning how I think most aptly, it's really learning how patients make decisions. Mm-hmm. It's helping them make better decisions, and you do that through something called co-discovery, coined by Dr. Uh, Bob Barkley in the 70s, and which is still just as important as ever today, and that is helping people discover things for themselves. We can look at a set of a full mouse series and mounted casts and photographs and treatment plan just like that. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't even really need the x-rays anymore these days. You know, give me some photos and some models. I can give you a treatment plan. Okay, by the way, let's check a few things here. But the patient can't do that. They've got to process this stuff. This stuff takes time. And you, it's, it's, I can't even begin to roll that up into one little thing. But I would just say look into the Bob Barkley Study Club, Panky Institute, Dawson, Spear, Coyce. I like all these people. We're all talking the same language. Um, go to all of them. I did. Yeah. <laughs> I've done them all. Absolutely. Um, four study clubs, uh, Mark Piper Study Club, Bob Barkley Study Club, Spear Study Club, Panky Study Club. Uh, yeah. CE. Yeah. Well, and it's easy. And I, I would imagine as a young dentist, it's very easy to follow in the technical CE. There's just an abundance of it. You can go and you look in every direction, you, but there's not a lot of behavioral courses. There's not a lot. I, you know, I I heard somebody say years ago, I don't know who it was, but your ability to communicate is going to determine how far you go. And I've just found that the the best communicators um, are always. There's some some awful dentists that are great communicators. That's so true. That's so true. And one of the, I think uh, there's even more really, really good dentists who really haven't done all that well. yeah, Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. And so oftentimes we can bang our heads and not look in the right direction, but 50% behavioral, 50% technical. Totally agree. What's number two? Number two, team. Okay. I love my team. Now, tell me about your team though. How many team members do you have? You have three ops. I have have three operatories in 900 square feet of space. And I actually have a very nice dental lab in the middle of all that. Wow. I am talking to you in my in my personal offices, which is also my consult room, and it's also my photography studio. I shoot por- uh, professional photography studio level photography in this little room. That's mm-hmm. my back, my uh, black background behind me, and uh, and I have five team members. One is my office administrator, one is my hygienist, and even though I only only have two chairs for myself, I have actually three assistants that I'm keeping busy. We have a lot of lab work in this type of practice. I do a lot of splint therapy. So my specialties are really cosmetic, restorative, and TMD. So um, uh, I haven't done a root canal in uh, over a decade. I don't do any surgery. Um, I do all of my own orthodontics, okay. um, both with uh, brackets and wires and with Invisalign. Um, but other than that, uh, no, PD, no pedo. Um, but yeah, I keep three assistants busy here. Although, and I, plus I have two of them are pregnant right now. So, uh, I, I kind of like being a little bit overstaffed and I pay them really, really well. And then if I look at my numbers and my overhead, it still works with the practice. So 
if you want really good team members, you got to pay them really well. You got to treat them really good. If you ask employee, if, if you ask dentists what's their number one beef in dentistry, it's employees. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I've been there. Okay, this did not happen overnight. Another thing that was not an overnight success. I could only say this: what I'm telling you about how much I love my team, and I've been doing this for 27 years. I probably only have really got there about three, four years ago. Mm -hmm. What was the secret though? What was the secret to finding these five people? Do you have any tips or tricks or some some good good advice? I'll give you a couple because, you know, uh, I learned a lot about hiring uh, from Paul Henney and there's a lot that you can learn about how how to hire the right people. You were talking about it recently on one of your uh, morning videos on hiring. Uh, that was a good video. I watched that one. Uh, and uh, I would say, first of all, I finally got lucky. Okay. All right. Because I ha- I had a lot of bad hires. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think even though I didn't really know what I was doing, I got a little luck. And I got one particular a uh, really good assistant that I just happened to find when I needed an assistant. I had met her in the endodontist office. She was doing an internship and I just remembered her and it wasn't long after that and then that I needed an assistant. So I, I called the endodontist and I said, is that girl Kristen? Is she still there? And she goes, yeah. I said, are you going to hire? And she said, oh no, I've got enough folks. I said, can I talk to her? <laughs> she got on the phone. And I hired her that day. I just knew. Mm-hmm. And then and then shortly after, I needed another. And I said, Kristen, I, we need another assistant. Oh, I have a friend who's not happy where she is. And she's really good. And since then, my team has, that was the first where they've brought all my new team members were brought by other team members. That's awesome. And then you they, take I, a- never, I haven't had to do a classified ad in like uh 12 years yeah but it took eight out of those 12 till it really really formulated yeah but sometimes yeah, you, sometimes it. you got to get lucky with one so that they can find another yeah keep the pattern going right yep now um, now you said reward um reward and just take care of your team give us some perspective on how what you guys do as a team do you do a lot of ce do you do fun stuff together what do you guys do yes and i was going to say number one beef amongst dentists was staff, which is not a number one beef for me anymore. For them, if you ask employees what their number one gripe is, number one is lack of clarification. Mm -hmm. Okay. Lack of clarification. You're not being, my boss is not being clear with what he he or she expects of me. Right. Number two is um, they are not given appreciation. Mm -hmm. And so I think probably one of the best things that I have gotten uh, that, that I'm good at at this point is I constantly tell them how much I appreciate them and why, Mm -hmm. you know, and I give examples, you know, you did this the other day with that patient. You realize how much bet, how much that better that makes my life that you handled that without me. You know, I've heard Dennis say before, you know, I come in the office and it's like these birds are pooping on me. You know, they're dropping all these, sticky notes and they're just bomb and they're throwing all the bombs and they're throwing all the problems on the dentist. Yeah. And it's like, Hey, wait a minute, who's working for who? So I really let them know how much I appreciate it when, with, when they solve problems without me having to do it, that just, that's what gets you energized. And then you're not, you're not a sunken ship at the end of the day. Yeah. You um, guys in the South are easy in, in North Carolina where you would, they say, I appreciate you. Like everywhere. I appreciate, yeah. I love that, that. You know, bless your heart. Bless your heart, which means 10 different things. But yeah. uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, but well, yeah, according to the U.S. Yeah. yeah, according to the U.S. Department of Labor Statistics, the number one reasons American, the number one reason Americans quit their jobs, especially in dentistry, is they just don't feel appreciated. They don't feel part of anything. So that's that's awesome. And then as far as CE goes, how much CE do you guys do in a year, John? Well, you know, it's amazing how many P- dentists do CE a lot, a ton of CE without their without their team. Right. And then and you know, I still do some without and they we always have an uh, office meeting, uh, a long lunch. Uh, so we do have some lunches if we have an office meeting. 
Okay. So when we do have uh, some, uh, we either have a whole day on a Friday or we do a two hour lunch. And then anytime I go to a significant course, we have a two hour lunch sometime during the week after that, because everybody knows in this office that change is a constant. We are constantly going to change everything. And it's not a question of, are we going to change anything when he gets back? It's what are we going to change and who's responsible for what? And then on my plane ride home, I've got an action list and I got names on there and everybody's getting something. Mm -hmm. And uh, and at that meeting, you know, because we got stuff to order, you know, we got stuff to order. We've got changes to make. Who's going to be responsible for it? So it's one thing to go to the meeting and it's another thing to implement what you learned and you got to involve the staff. What's even better is taking them with you. And that's where we love going to stuff like. Uh, you know, uh, FACD is always close for us. Um, so I'll take the whole team to that or to Panky alumni meeting, this and that and the other. And boy, there's nothing like taking your whole team because they get to hear the same inspiring words that you heard. If they just hear it from the dentist, it's like sometimes it's like, oh, crap, you know, what's yeah. he want to do now? You know, but if they got to hear somebody like Kirk speak they're going to get the same inspiration as the dentist and they're going to come back and they're going to be putting your feet to the fire. Like we need to do this. Come right. on, doc, you know, get with it. You said we were going to do this. Come on. Right. Yeah. And you're also making a statement by taking them with you. It's a, it's a, it's a visual verbal, you know, intentional investment in the people. And, you know, oftentimes dentists like to refer to how much it costs. No, it's an investment. You're investing in these people because, they're, they're not going to get it by osmosis, you coming back fired up. And secretly, dentists need to know this. Most team members will go, just let him calm down. He'll be back to normal by <laughs> Wednesday. Do you know what I mean? Like, let's yeah. just keep him crazy busy. And that's, that's the key. They'll just keep you so busy, you won't even remember. More what sticky course notes. You More sticky notes. <laughs> <Yeah>. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> What's yeah. number two? Well, that was number two. Oh, that was number two. I'm sorry. All right. So I saved the best for last. Number All one right. key, especially if you want to practice the way – what this way of practicing, which I really think is the best, uh, a clear written vision, what you want, where you're going, down to what it smells like and what it feels like. By the way, I uh, have had the privilege of working with a life coach for the last two years. Her name is Michelle Young out of Vancouver, Washington. Michelle Young, life coach. Best money I've ever spent on myself. Unbelievable um, what she has helped me do. Um, the main premise being that our thoughts control our emotions. Our emotions control our actions and our actions control our results. Mm-hmm. And that makes sense, but learning how to do that is another thing, and she's been helping me learn that. Um, one of the things that she did with me was she, she had me write out my vision, and I thought I was really good at this, and I wrote it, and then she edited it. So then she took my written vision, and I had to cover all categories in my life. My spiritual life, which I'm a, just a, a giant Christian and that's number one, my family life, my, my practice, my health, working out, hobbies, fun, play, all this stuff. And written out in a form, you couldn't just write bullet points. So then she, what she did was she, she said, so how does that make you feel at the end of the sentence? So, and you have to write it as if it is already happened. You're writing it in the future and you're writing it as if, this is this is it. I mean, hey, it's and and and, I, and you can do a one year vision, you can do a three year vision, a five year, ten year. I think multiple is the best. Right. You got to take the time to sit down and do this stuff, and then get some help, you know, from somebody and and have them look at it. Because I wrote a lot of bullet points, and she says, no, that's not good enough. I want to know what it feels like to weigh what you really want to weigh. Yeah. Now, a lot of people have heard this and they go, you know, Justin, I hear that all the time and I wrote mine and it's in a binder somewhere. But vision work never ends. Like you're constantly working on it. Would you agree in all these years you've been practicing? Well, I've especially been doing that recently. And and yes, written. And I said written. It's got to be written. But 
it's also something that you just think about. Um, I also uh, spend a half an hour every morning when I wake up doing something called Agoscu exercises. If any of you are Mm -hmm. having trouble with your neck and your back, most dentists, look into uh, Agoscu posture therapy. And I just do about... Who are you working with over there? Those guys are awesome. Well, I've I've got a, a... a girl in town named Katie Ingersoll. Okay. And um, for the price of a crown, mm-hmm. <laughs> for the price of a crown, I finally got this stuff resolved. I also stopped power lifting. I still surf. Yeah. I box. <laughs> I'm going boxing today at five. So I box. I do a spin class. Um, I still surf, but I, I did give up the power lifting. <laughs> that, mm-hmm. that had to go. I got rid of the power lifting. Then I do these exercises every day, which are really easy and they're almost like meditative. Okay. And so I'm real big on meditation now too. And so you can be thinking of your vision and, and my spiritual part is I'm starting off the day with that and I'm helping my neck and back while I'm at it so that I can practice dentistry for a long time. And I've never been more comfortable. I'm 54. That's awesome, buddy. That is awesome. And getting that vision clear and start when you move start to move in direction the vision starts to grow you get more excited it brings energy to everybody and i would guess your team members they feel it they get to see it every day they bought into it and that's one of the most fulfilling parts for you right absolutely and listen you know you can't you can't do the do as i say not as i do thing you know right and i'm still you know i'm i'm still a little crazy i'm a nut and and I got some idiosyncrasies, but we have fun with it in the office. And actually, I was just talking to uh, one of my staff members, Courtney, my office administrator, this morning. I said, you know, one of those, my life coaches got me working on neutrality. Neutrality means, you know, stuff is going to happen in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, somebody's going to, I'm not immune to the things that can happen. Although I will say we have very, very few cancellations. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just not an issue. But every now and then something will happen and, or, you know, a big case falls through because of this or that or whatever. And it's like, you know, how you react to that is your choice, you know. Right. And so I'm learning how to approach the bad stuff with neutrality and with gratitude. And these are these are, again, life coaching type things that will help you in your profession. Uh, these are behavioral things. Yeah. Get your mind right. Get your attitude right. Treat your team well, pay them well, and, you know, that's leadership. Mm-hmm. And, and, and you're going to have folks that will bend over backwards for you. If I, gotta, if I need to come in to do a case on a Friday when we weren't going to be open, the assistants are fighting over who gets to come in and do it. You know, I mean, they just, they want work. We have fun. That's awesome, buddy. Well, buddy, I am so grateful for the time. I mean, I am so grateful for our friendship. Now, I know people are going to want to know, learn more about what you guys do. Can you give us, you know, Johnson, what is the Bob Barkley Study Club? You know, where can I learn more about it? How can I reach out to you, find more about you? Can And keep in mind, people are listening on iTunes, too. So, Okay, so um, a few things. Um, I, I teach uh, – Photography, hands-on photography courses, and something called the Trial Smile is a direct composite uh, mock-up that okay. I hand do with composite. It's it, it's a a different thing than um, digital smile design. I love digital smile design. I did the hands-on training with uh, Christian Coachman. I still use it for some types of cases, but ninety percent of my uh, aesthetically driven cases, I will do a compo- hand done composite mock-up and i teach uh hands-on workshops for study clubs on that very behavioral by the way so you get with these things both with photography and with that um you get the behavioral with it um bob barkley study club you can find them on the bob barkley study club facebook page we're actually have two meetings coming up where we have a sleep specialist coming to talk to us Next weekend. Can you remember his name? I forgot his name. Yeah, I don't have it in front of me, but I hear he's fantastic. And I'm trying to get him on the show, too. He's a busy guy. And if it's uh, Bob Bar- if you just look up Bob Barkley Study Club on Facebook, uh, Facebook you can find that. We are also going to have another meeting that's going to be really, really special November 3rd. And that is going to be in Old Town, Alexandria, Virginia. Mm-hmm. 
And that will be Paul Henney on the very latest on behavioral dentistry. And I tell you, if this stuff makes sense to you and you really want to know more about behavioral dentistry, I would think about being there November 3rd. And, and again, go right to that Facebook page. Also, the Panky Institute. I believe uh, there's, of all these institutes, I think they're all great. I'm teaching there now. I'm a little bit biased, but I do believe that we have an an extra emphasis on behavioral dentistry, and we do uh, tend to spend time in the evenings with open sessions where there's more give and take, and people really start opening up about all the stuff they got in dentistry, and you realize that you're not alone, and it, I just think you have a special experience down there. Yeah, and I've been through it, and I know the day courses are incredible, but the evening sessions, absolutely my favorite back at the condos. I, I don't think I've ever laughed that hard in my life, but I've also, that's the real learning where you can't, some of the things that are said, you're like, oh my gosh, they tell you everything, and it is awesome learning, and those are lifetime friends, so... Yeah. Johnson, I am so grateful to have you on, buddy. I know you got to get ready for your, your next patient and then Carbon's out some time for us. But um, thank you again so much for being on, my friend. Um, and uh, stick around while we say goodbye to everybody else. But thank you guys for watching. I hope you found this enjoyable. If you're a young dentist, listen to this, man. He's He's been through it all and he's got an incredible practice, incredible family. Like you're just a great guy. Just enjoy our friendship. And uh, if you wouldn't mind, just hit the share button, share with your friends. Keep sending us suggestions that you want to see. If you want to ask Johnson some questions, I'll have him back and we'll talk some more. Uh, and then also suggestions you guys want to see for other shows. So until we see you next time, keep watching the best practices show. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.